we left in August of uh, 2001 when I was in the Marine Corps. Yeah, so and let's, get, let's go back to that. Yeah. Let's, let's get into the joining the Marine Corps and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, um, that came much later in life. I mean, that was, that was one of those things. I was at-risk youth. And for that, it took me a while to really figure out what I wanted to do. That was the, when I went to the Marine Corps, that was the first plane ride of my whole life. Mm -hmm. I never really went anywhere, hadn't traveled, you know, everywhere we traveled was by car. Um, so that came much later in life. Uh, I was, I say much later in life, I was 19. Um, but that was really after I'd kind of exhausted everything to figure out where I fit. Um, I, I'm a typical entrepreneur mm -hmm. <laughs> in that. Uh, I'm a high school dropout. I didn't, I didn't graduate high school. Um, so the Marine Corps was that solution for me to be part of something bigger than myself and also see the world in a way that I'd never seen it before. Now, now I have a question for you about you, you mentioned be something bigger than myself. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us who have served as veterans look back on our time and realize that was a great benefit. Was that why you got into the Marine Corps or, uh, cause in my case, I got into the Air Force because I wanted to fly in planes and see the world and like sure. all the all the wrong reasons to go do it. But I stayed because was doing really impactful things and being part of something bigger than myself. If I had to be really honest, joining the Marine Corps was just a way to get out of mm -hmm. Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, I didn't know how much it would affect me until I got there, until I became a part of that. But uh, but yeah, I think that the initial way was just like, I've got to do something different. So I just had to get the heck out of town. That's awesome. Yeah. So you've arrived at the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. Where'd you do boot camp? Uh, so I did boot camp in MCRD San Diego. Okay. Uh, so West Coast Marine, uh, Hollywood Marine, as some people mm. uh, colorfully put it. Um, and then from there, I did all my time right there at Camp Pendleton. Uh, so I was part of 1st Battalion, 1st Marines. And what was interesting is I went in January 2000, so pre-9-11. Mm -hmm. And I got out uh, post 9-11, but we happened to be on uh, the 15th Mew at the time. Uh, like I said, we had left that summer of 2001, uh, had no idea uh, that what we were in for. Um, and I did, I did a TED talk about this, uh, TEDx talk later about this in life. Um, it was actually my birthday, September 10th. Mm -hmm. So I was in Darwin, Australia, um, doing what any just turned 21 year old Marine would be doing. I, I've, I've been to Darwin, so yeah. I know what there is to do in Darwin, yeah. Australia. Um, and we were out partying and then we got called back to the ship. And honestly, I thought everything was a, uh, I thought it was a drill because that was our first international port of call on that, on mm -hmm. that deployment. So I'm like, really a drill on our first, on our first port of call. And then it was a very sobering experience when we got back to the boat and kind of saw everything that was going on. And uh, I had no idea how much everyone's life would change from that moment. Yeah, yeah, it was a it was a big deal. I remember the one thing I will never forget about that day. I was stationed in Boston, mm -hmm. and I will never forget how blue the sky was that day in Boston. It was one of those perfectly clear fall days. Yeah, so so blue it kind of hurt your eyes. Yeah, and that till my last day that is. I will never forget that about 9-11. Wow. It's powerful. All right. Well, that was heavy. Okay. So what did you take away from the Marine Corps yeah. that helps you now with all of the many things you have going on now? There's, there's a couple things that, that I think carry over into civilian life. And that's, that's a huge passion for me, right, is veteran transition. Mm -hmm. um, one is the organizational structure. I think there's a lot of organizations that can learn from the military and how to implement communication and leadership structure into their organizations. But more important than that, and it's something that really has played a strong, significant value in my life, is values and, and really understanding how, if you have a strong set of core values, that can be, be a magnet for people to come to you, or but it can also repel people away that don't believe in the same things that you believe. Um, there's a lot of playful banter between all the military branches, mm -hmm. Uh, but there's just an an unspeakable bond that normally happens whenever you have two Marines that connect for for whatever reason. Um, so 
Um, there's lots of that in every branch or every organization that people have been a part of. Uh, but I think that's one of the biggest things that I still carry over and, and help people with in their organizations. Yeah, the, the shared values we have. We have our rivalries across the service. We see that at right. veterans events here in town. <laughs> but but when it's on, it's on. We all we yeah. all snap into it and, and it goes and we make it work. And and I, I agree. I think those those shared values uh, have been an, an essential part of military folks becoming great military entrepreneurs and helping build entrepreneurial communities here in Las Vegas and elsewhere. 